Welcome to the Wizards of Ecom, your no-fluff playbook for online success. Each episode is fully packed with actionable tactics you can implement in your business right now. Take your life to a higher level and excel in your online success. It's time to work on you and your business. Let's do this. Welcome back to the Wizards of Ecom podcast. My name is Carlos, and I will be joined today by my fellow wizard and co-host, Noemi Bolojang. Welcome, Noemi. Hi, welcome. How are you doing? Amazing. Noemi, we are joined today by our mutual friend, fellow Wizards of Amazon and veteran Amazon seller, Mark Firma. Welcome to the show, Mark. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, listeners. I, I love to see that Mark is a morning person. I don't know why I was concerned that he wasn't going to make the time for this recording. But are you a morning person, Mark? Because I seem to remember you weren't. I have three kids. It's hard not to be a morning person. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm supposed to say something, right? As the host, but I didn't even know what to say to that. I totally get it with two kids. Noemi totally gets it with like a, a wild okay. cat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hugh, <laughs> shout out to Hugh. Um, on today's show, we'll be discussing the nightmare, which is logistics right now and how not to let it sink you in your business. Like that's the premise because everyone's talking about, you know, they can't make sense of Amazon anymore. Uh, for one reason or another, it's either like sea freight is taking eight weeks or the main one I feel is everyone seems to think that, or everyone's talking about how they just can't get anything checked into Amazon, maybe because they're just starting the product or they have an established product. So we're going to, the, the idea here is to be able to, for us to share what we're doing to address a situation and not like stick our head in the sand. Um, share some solutions that we might be using to address this. And then maybe we can, you know, put our forecasting hats on. And since, since we've been selling for a while and like, let's all think about what we think may happen in Q4 or like the trend that is logistics right now. So um, shout out on this episode, this is episode 100. So I appreciate everybody that's rode with us. Uh, I don't know Amy. And I definitely appreciate anyone that's rode with us for this long. And we would love a review of the podcast. So let's jump into this. Uh, Mark, true, true or false statement. How about this? What do you think that everybody is having to wait eight weeks to get their shipment checked into Amazon FBA? False. No, Amy, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, it depends a lot on your strategy. I, guess. I love the depends answer, but I'm going to press you harder on that. But like, it depends on what, like, what about your check-in times? Like, what are you, what are you dealing with when you send your shipments to FBA? Like how quickly or how slowly are you getting them checked in? Yeah, at this point, I, I don't really have a problem because I, we're still using uh, to send in cartons. So we don't deal with pallets. We're sending in cartons. It's a super easy check-in. Truly, it's, it might be a bit more expensive, but for us, it's worth it rather than just like having inventory sit in a warehouse or having inventory sit just in a way. So I think that's a better idea for us, depending on your product. This is why I said depends. Yeah, I, I'm going to jump in and say false too, but Mark, wh why do you, you hear people say six to eight weeks is how long it's taking. Like why, why do you think people are saying that? Why are they, they're not lying, right? Why are they experiencing that? And why do you think that statement's false? So it, it could be a, a, a variety of different things, but let's say the, we receive a lot of product um, via pallet, but we've realized for cash flow purposes that the most important thing for our business model is to turn over as quick as possible. Turn the inventory over, get it back into cash. So a lot of times while we receive our inventory, a wholesale order, our products in pallet, and it makes most sense to send it in pallet, we end up sending it through UPS. You can also do that same, the, the model of, you know, you don't have inventory coming in yet from China or from wherever you're uh, sourcing overseas. You ship the bulk via water, via boat, um, and then you send something express via air. Um, that way you, you kind of stay on rotation. So, um, yeah, people are experiencing it. I've seen a lot of delays with um, Amazon pickups. So if you trust Amazon to do your pallet pickup, let's say you just, there's no way around it. You got to go with pallets um, and you rely on Amazon to pick up. I've seen Amazon delay up to two weeks, uh, just one single pickup, even after a confirmed date um, is set in the system. Um, I think once you start to experience these issues, the most important thing is, 
long-term strategy, long-term plan as to how you're going to avoid these in the future. Um, you only have to deal with out of stock once. You only have to deal with uh, slow, uh, you know, receiving once um, for you to realize that it could really be a burden on your business and you have to start acting. Um, in certain parts of the U.S. where we have some fulfillment um, or some logistics, um, we've seen that there are third-party companies that will actually get the product in the same day that they pick up. Um, having those relationships, looking for those relationships, building those kinds of relationships are very important for your business overall. And while we do rely overall on Amazon, the less sometimes you rely on some of their services, the more important it is. Uh, perfect. I, I have a, I have like a, a few questions out of that and, and Noemi, I cut yeah. me off whenever, but first, since you just said an amazing piece, which I support that message, what can you share a little bit? Cause I, I know I have an unfair advantage here that I know you and, and I'm familiar with some of, of your business stuff, but you, you do a lot of shipping and you do a lot of different types of shipping. Can you share a little bit about not the specific products, obviously, but the different models you deal with, like you're not just coming from experience in one model. Can you share a little bit about what your business looks like? And that way listeners yeah. can know like, yeah, I better listen to this guy. Yeah. So um, our business is a, is a fair mix. Um, it's not even a fair mix. I, I would say it's 20% uh, private label. Um, within that there's the bulkier, heavier items that cost a lot of, of money when they, when they're going to UPS. Um and then we also have those products that are very lightweight, uh, don't take up much storage or inventory space, um, and can and can fly fairly inexpensive. We also the, the remaining eighty percent is uh, based on wholesale, so um, we're big players in the wholesale market and the wholesale industry, um, and so it's a fine mix between those two um, that are that are uh, that our business runs on. Love it. I have to say that some of my experience or a lot of the better uh, experience I've gotten as a PL shipper came from dealing with like arbitrage equivalents and wholesale because you, you just see a lot more and you have to deal with a lot more different stuff. What, what about you? You mentioned, you mentioned 20% of your, you know, your model was PL. Are you, or were you shipping direct from, I'm assuming China to FBA prior to like these restrictions or, or how did that impact your business model? And what would you say to somebody who does want to ship directly to Amazon FBA right now? So we've never shipped directly to Amazon at all. Um, and it's, it, we've been, uh, we, we've dealt with several plans of actions over time, um, a POA, right? And, and the POAs over time have gotten stricter uh, and more real. You used to be able to fabricate something that you were going to do a plan, um, how you found the, the, the problem or the solution or, or what you're working on. And, and I've seen that, you know, as time goes on, Amazon's stricter on it. And for me, it's very hard to get product into Amazon that I haven't had a chance to review or look at myself. So for a plan of action, um, it's almost like my business is built around a plan of action. Um, and that's, what's made me a lot more comfortable. I used to wake up at, you know, whatever time, check my email and if all of a sudden something's suppressed, I, I go into panic mode. Um, and I've realized over time that that's really a reality, um, and a norm almost on Amazon. So we work around that. I've never shipped into Amazon directly, but we try and have as much of the work that would need to be done, done ahead of time. Right. So if you're doing private label, make sure you have your FN SKUs already placed on the packaging. Um, all the small things. Um, when it comes to wholesale, don't hire Amazon to put the labels on. Don't hire Amazon to put the poly bags on. Don't hire Amazon to really do any of the process that your business requires or that your products require in order to go into Amazon, but through Amazon. Find a way to do it yourself. It's going to go smoother. It's going to go faster. Once your inventory, if people are complaining already or seeing an issue with checking product in, imagine once it gets checked in and then waits in line for Amazon employees to get their hands on it, put it in poly bags, put it in bubble mailers, uh, put a FN SKU sticker on it. Um, and we've also run into issues in the past where Amazon's made a mistake where we haven't hired them, but they've made a mistake on their own in stickering something that wasn't supposed to be stickered at all. 
Um, so we've kind of seen it all. Um, and therefore, for us, it makes most sense to just have all the work done up, uh, you know, up front. Um, we love our warehouse days as much as we hate our warehouse days, but we see the importance of having our warehouse days, getting all the work done and having the, the inventory hundred percent ready to go once it lands in Amazon. And do, and are you, you mentioned warehouses. Most sellers I notice don't have a warehouse. I think it's extremely advantageous to have one unless you don't need one. Like if somebody, I mean, I'm not saying go out and buy a warehouse if you're just starting, but I'm assuming that you also do a lot of merchant fulfilled. Yes, we do a lot of merchant fulfill. Um, I always suggest and recommend, and in our business model, we always have our FBM listing right next to our FBA listing. And that kind of goes hand in hand with running out of stock. Sometimes you run out of stock um, while having inventory um, in the US um, and having that FBM keeps the listing alive keeps that momentum there and allows you to fulfill those four or five orders, 10, 15, 50 orders, whatever it may be, um, while you're getting your inventory back into FBA. And was this side-by-side -side FBM, FBA strategy for each ASIN something that you adopted because of the pandemic and essentials? Or how long has that played a part in your business? So it's, it's played a part since day one. Um, you know, the pandemic... Uh, created additional challenges. One of the things um, I'm going to throw in a disclaimer, you know, one thing we, we have to acknowledge um, is that everybody's going through the same thing we're all going through, whether they're selling on Amazon, whether they're selling outside of Amazon. I was talking to a logistics friend the other day, and he was telling me that some of these big box retailers are already getting their containers in for the December, for December holidays. That's how far in advance uh, some of these brands are going. What the pandemic did is it stopped a lot of production. So a lot of stores are selling the inventory that was available to them through their manufacturers as opposed to waiting, uh, installing. So there's, there's a, um, a lot that goes into this. Um, but yeah, we noticed FBM um, the first time we ran out of inventory, right? One of our best selling SKUs, we ran out of inventory. Um, and that was almost our lesson learned. Um, we quickly rushed the warehouse to see any and all returns, what was salvageable, what could still be sold. Um, and, um, and yeah, so FBM, uh, an FBM listing has always been available for us. No, Amy, how about you? Are you incorporating like that, that tandem, that FBM, FBA? And same question, is it something that you adopted during the pandemic or, or what? Yeah, same here. I think that for us, not only the pandemic, but also because um, there was this 200 limitation on new accounts or spe specifically on new ASINs. And we also dealt with that. So that also helped us understand, hey, FBA, it's a great plan. It's not, it, it cannot be the only plan. So I think that as Mark was saying, the pandemic also helped us to understand, hey, <laughs> you know, things are changing. So you better be prepared. Um, but regarding Mark's question, uh, I, think, I think regarding what Mark was saying, I think my question there would be like, what's your strategy or what would you recommend someone who know only about FBA and okay, what, what, what are the advantages of FBN besides obviously that you have more control there? What would the challenge there would be to like prepare for it, I guess? Yeah, I mean, so FBM requires additional research, right? Um, it, it requires the research into, um, into the logistics portion, which is really how much is it going to cost for my item to ship? For a lot of people, you know, they're selling um, items under $20, or if you're selling an item under $20, it might become very expensive to do that FBM, um, or it might no longer work for you. Um, but there's a mix, since we have a mix of listeners, um, some of the first products we ever transitioned into FBM were serial number products, right? Um, while we don't, you know, want, you know, we'll call a spade a spade. There's a lot of uh, buyers on Amazon that might, might do fraudulent returns um, and you might be hit with those. And when it comes to larger ticketed items, um, I, I initially started our FBM and we actually got FBM prime approved um, because of those kinds of items. We were getting, massive returns left and right. And sometimes Amazon was placing those items back into inventory. So it became a really big uh, headache and an issue for us. So um, we created those FBM listings. We also ran out of stock in our number one uh, bestseller, which was one of those trickier items. Um, so 
it was trickier, I, I say, because it was heavy. It's a heavy item. It's not that expensive. And so the, the shipping sometimes comes into question as to can I actually fulfill something from Florida to California and still make a profit? Um, and, that, and that's a business decision um, at that point, you know, whether, whether the FBM is there, you know, in, in the situations where the FBM was just really holding over that inventory um, and allowing me to get inventory back into stock, I didn't care if I lost a few dollars shipping something to California because I was looking at the overall and the big picture. Um, it's a lot more expensive to run out of inventory from every standpoint on Amazon than it is to keep that listing live and, and, and uh, with the traction that you've built. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, that's, I agree. I, and I've always preached that Mark. Uh, it's, it's definitely, there's a cost to going out of stock and I was going to host a meetup event and sort of come like the topic was going to be that topic. I had to postpone it. We're going to have it like in a month, but for the first time, I'm, I'm running my numbers and I'm seeing, okay, what, like you mentioned the big box retail stores and how advanced they need to order. Like we went all in on our order, expecting, you know, ordering as if we're going to grow 50, 60%, which places a huge strain when ordering from China on your cash flow. But once we place the order and then it's taking like an extra month or two to ship out, you're tying up cash flow for like six months. And now it's like, okay, what we ordered may not take us through Q4. And with delays, I need to think of, you know, Chinese New Year. And things are not going to get quicker in Q4. I mean, we could dive into predictions later, but I don't think, think things are going to like miraculously get more efficient in Q4. And looking at, I don't know how to calculate this. Like maybe you know, and, and that is what is the cost of tying up capital for that long when you're a wholesaler as well. I, I do some wholesale as well. I got to look at that capital that I'm tying up for eight months and say, what sort of damage in uh, damage for me is profits? Like what sort of damage can I do in that same period of time if I was just purchasing domestically versus going out of stock? And for once I'm looking at those numbers and it's, it's not as clear. Does that make sense? And like, what do you, what do you think of that? I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I absolutely agree with you um, and that. But the reason why we started Private Label, um, and it's something that you've preached for so long, it's the one thing nobody can take away from us, right? Um, the wholesale model, we don't control. We're, we're, we're another reseller. But when it comes to our private label, our private brand, um, you don't look at the, just the short-term profits. You got to look at the long-term profits. Um, and that's a brand that's going to continue to grow. It's, it's, a, it's a brand that's going to continue to grow traction. Um, and if you're somebody who goes into everything with an exit strategy, it's, it's, it's a long-term investment as to when you're going to end up selling that brand. You know, um, what were you able to do and grow it over the time? I have many friends who started brands and um, worked like slaves to their company and to their brand for numerous years with, with minimal pay. And, and only the day that they actually checked out and sold the business did they finally say, that's where the last eight, nine years of sweat have gone. I don't even know anyone that successfully sold their business for like a really good amount that didn't do exactly that. Like that's, that's like the unsaid thing in the Amazon PL space. Like everyone's talking about the riches with PL. The riches really come when you exit. Outside of that, it's just a matter of, are you making the same as a school teacher or are you closer to six figures? Like it's not... I mean, yeah, there's some scenarios where it's a lot more, but it's, it's a job until you exit. Yeah. And it's like an asset, you know, it's, it's like an investment property or whatever it is. You, you have to dress it up. You got to, you know, uh, fix it, make sure it's clean, make sure it's always looking good, make sure the marketing's on point so that it can continue to grow. Um, you know, with the whole running out of stock, I, I forget where I read it, but it was like, um, you know, stick to the, the three W's. Working, water, warehouse. So always have inventory being worked on. Okay. Water, always have product moving in, you know, by, by sea. It's the least expensive. And then warehouse, have a place, even if you don't own your own warehouse, have a third party logistics where you can have a couple of pallets um, so that the, the ecosystem continues um, to, to turn. 
Look at Mark dropping knowledge, the three W's. I love it. That might be the promo clip, like the little sizzle reel for this episode that comes out. That's nice. I like that. The three, it's memorable too. Water, like keeping the water flowing. Uh, the first W was a uh, warehouse. Water. Working. Working, working warehouse. The working water warehouse. I love it. That's that's genius. I'm going to steal that one. All yours. Start using it. I, I don't remember where I read it because it's not mine either. <laughs> okay. So. All right. You, you said something earlier and it was like the thing I immediately wanted to ask you about, but I, I don't think anyone would, I wouldn't forgive myself either. And you've mentioned this in a meetup group when you were on a panel with me. And that is you, there is a way that you're getting based on relationships, same day check-ins. Can you unpack? Cause anyone listening to this, that's especially someone that's like, Oh, I'm take, it's taking eight weeks for me to check in. How are you accomplishing same day check-ins? And where do I build a relationship with someone that can, that can swing that? Yeah. So it, um, it's actually, it's a connection. Um, and, and at the end of the podcast, I'll share my details. Anybody who wants to reach out, it's not like a secret or anything, um, through developers, uh, through developers, through uh, distributors, um, and, um, people in the industry that I've met, um, it's up in the tri-state. So it's, it's, it takes care of Pennsylvania New York, um, a couple of the distribution centers in that area, the New Jersey area. Um, there's, there's companies that have developed relationships within Amazon or within the the Amazon fulfillment or distribution. Um, and they have, I don't know, I don't know really what they do or how they have that relationship. Um, but they pick up my goods today and by tomorrow they're already received and being checked into Amazon as opposed to this, um, the trailer that it goes into in the, in the parking lot and it's gotta be full before it goes in and the whole, you know, the story around that. So, um, yeah, it's something I'm right now, we have a lot of manufacturing being done in, in Dallas. So right now we're looking to create that same relationship. Our warehouse is 45 minutes away from one of the biggest fulfillment centers, um, in Dallas. Um, one of the, actually the receiving centers in Dallas. And we've seen when you trust Amazon, that pickup being delayed by two weeks and it's a 45 minute drive. So, um, so as you, you know, that's the relationship I'm building right now, trying to see what companies exist in Dallas, who's got relationships within Amazon. And it's just, it's just a matter of research. Um, Nothing more, nothing less, you know, as this gets trickier, as this gets, um, you know, um, more interesting, more brands go out or more, more, uh, more uh, logistics companies revolve around that and and look for those, um, for those relationships in order to be able to offer those services. It's, you know, you know, Scott Needham, I don't know, you know, Scott Needham, Scott Needham from like buy boxer or something by boxer. And then the Amazon lit guys, they are, they're putting a lot of information out there now on depending on where, and I don't know if this ties a little bit into what you're saying, but depending on your proximity to your, the proximity and the volume or like the team volume of where you're at to the warehouse of an FBA center it may make sense to enroll in the Amazon transportation program. I'm assuming get a truck or two and get your stuff there lightning fast, same day. Um, have you heard anything about that? And is that something you've, you've ever given serious thought to? Yeah. Anything that makes money, I put serious thought to. <laughs> so, so yeah, I've, I've thought about it. Um, where we are right now though, I, I wouldn't mind, um, uh, you know, hiring somebody or kind of spreading that knowledge onto to somebody who's already involved in logistics and kind of handing it off to them, uh, maybe showing them the ropes or showing them the importance of it and uh, and really taking allowing them to take lead. It's just one more thing that we would have to then kind of calculate, think about, worry about, stress about the truck had an issue or something else. Um, so, um, but yeah, look, you're, the relationships you make, we, we've been able to make some relationships within Amazon just from problems arising, nothing, nothing else than that. You know, we had an issue where a a truck of ours got, or a pickup got delayed by two weeks. We escalated an issue. It escalated. We, you know, we were just persistent with it and respectful with it. Um, And we got to a supervisor who basically told us anytime you're having this issue, just CC me on it. So we wait a couple of days. If it happens, we CC him on it. And the next day it's picked up. Um, So that specific contact I've been asked not to give out, but it's those relationships that, you know, that come in and, um, and then you're able to build and, and work off of that, you know, work long-term. 
So I understand just like any, any other business relationships are important. Sorry, go ahead, Noemi. No, it was like, uh, definitely, I, I love what you were saying, that persistent and still respectful. Like most of the time what I see, people are either like, they might be pers- uh, very, very like, per- persistent, but they're not really respectful. So how would you, uh, how, how did you approach basically that, okay, being persistent, but still like, okay, I'm nice. I, I understand, but I still have a problem. So how would you fix it for me? It, you know, that's a little bit tougher, um, you know, and that's and that's really got, we got to take a look inside, you know, and how would we like to be treated? A lot of the people that we speak to at Amazon don't really have much of the control we think they do. And while we might be very stressed because it's our business, um, you know, you you have to you have to realize that just in being nice and being friendly, you're going to get a lot further than being mean and being rude. And um, you, you jeopardize a lot more as well. Um, I, I don't know if I ever, I, I think I might've shared this story with Carlos, but uh, I had an issue once with eBay. I know we're not talking about eBay right now, but um, where I got a sale, a, a customer service rep who we weren't understanding one another. And I got a little bit aggressive in, in my frustration on them, not understanding just my simple message, my simple mistake, my simple error um, that, that I was trying to deal with. And um, within 30 minutes, my entire eBay account had been closed. All my listings had been brought down. I didn't curse. I didn't say anything, you know, but you, you forget that some of the people that are receiving these phone calls are at a call center in a city that's got multiple call centers and they can go from one building to the next. This is your business is your livelihood the better you treat it, the better and more respectful you are to individuals, the better chance you have of making connections, making relationships that are going to, um, you know, um, really take that to the maximum, to the furthest extent possible. Um, So it's tough. We we get frustrated. I I, I would say, take a deep breath. Don't ever do anything, you know, in in that, in that stressful stance. And and that really goes for not just here. Uh, It goes with partners in life. It goes with uh, relationships in life. It's, You know, you have to make that change um, because, you know, I I used to come onto the phone with uh, Amazon. I tell them, hey, guys, while you're you're getting paid for this phone call right now and you're preventing me from getting paid by not helping me solve my issue. That never really got me anywhere, um, even though it was true. Um, So, yeah, it's just, you know, you got to be respectful and karma plays a big part into it and and, and good rewards good. And and so, um, so, yeah, there's a lot of stressful situations. Um, a good, a great thing is that we have a community. Um, so if you really are frustrated about an issue, bring it to the community prior to taking it to Amazon and, and blasting them or, or whatever rep you're going to speak to. Um, most of the centers or the departments within Amazon that can actually solve a problem don't have incoming calls. So, you know, it's, you, you really, your whole business is trusted into something that you, you don't want to abuse. Um, and it's just really that. No, I love that because you were talking about building up relationship and at the end it was the relationship that saved you on. Okay, now I, I don't have to wait. I don't know how, like weeks. I'm just like writing. So I love that because most of the time what I see, not only new sellers, but like generally sellers are super frustrated with like Amazon support, you know? And yeah, it's a frustration, but in the same time, they are there to help you. So if you don't understand that, yeah, it's like no relationship that can be built on, I don't know, yeah. being impatient, definitely. Yeah, and it's definitely frustrating. Um, it's definitely, definitely frustrating, but nothing in life is easy. And, you know, while Amazon could give you that, you know, work four hours, work six hours, be on the beach all day, you know, if you really want to be successful, if you really want your business to grow, you're going to have to put a lot more than four hours while being at the beach and, and sending some some emails. You know, um, the, the, the reality of it is anybody you know, who you've had speak, anybody who comes in um, and has grown their Amazon business hasn't done it with three hours spent a day. Um, you know, I know many of us are up at nights, you know, um, sometimes one in the morning, two in the morning, just just kind of working through some of these problems and error can arise at any time of the day. You sometimes wake up at eight in the morning, nine in the morning, six in the morning, whatever time. And you see that a, a, a listing was suppressed at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So Amazon's always working. Um, and, and you have to feed that if you want that to grow, if you're just looking for some passive income, a little bit of money so that you can go ahead and retire, 
that's 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 also a solution or a, or an opportunity on Amazon. But we're talking about scaling and we're talking about growth. And scaling and growth comes with a little bit of sweat and tears. Mm -hmm. Carlos, you were saying we cut you off. Yeah, I was going to say so. So so far, some of the ways to address this. Uh, so it looks like at the end of this, we're going to have like four or five different tactics that people can use to instead of just ignoring it and, and griping on social media on how to sort of address the problem of extended check-in times to Amazon. And one of them, I didn't know if you agreed on it. I, I, I've definitely seen it. Noemi was mentioning in the beginning is instead of sending stuff by pallets, what would have been a lot cheaper was to send them in by master box or a like small parcel. Um, you're nodding. So I can see you on the video. But, so you agree with that. Then we have the side-by-side -side merchant fulfilled with um, FBA listing to help. Uh, you have a contact that you're going to share. Well, your contact that you'll be able to connect people with maybe at the end of the show that will allow people to possibly even get same day check-in times if, if the ingredients are right. Let, let's talk about another one that is getting a lot more traction lately. What's been your experience with 2D barcodes and getting stuff checked in fast to Amazon? So I personally haven't used any of that myself. Um, so I'll just be, I'll be honest and upfront there. Um, I put my, my F and SKU labels on when they need to go on. And um, yeah, again, I, I put my focus on not running out of inventory. I know that's the easy route, but it's really the most important, you know, plan a right. Um, plan a should be not ever running out of inventory. So the le the more you work on plan A, the less you need a plan B. And once you once you start to get into plan B, absolutely, um, shipping by air is going to be a lot better. Uh, it's going to be a lot more expensive, but for cash flow purposes, your inventory will get in. You won't miss out on the sales, and you'll be overturning. You know, you'll turn over that cash quickly. So I personally haven't used um, um, you know different barcodes or, or those methods that have been recently spoken about a lot. Yeah. No, Amy, how about yourself? Or have you started doing any 2D barcodes? I'm going to be very, very newbie at this answer. But yeah, actually, I had no clue that there's a difference between them. And I've been using only 2D barcodes without knowing. So probably that's also a reason why it was like checked in super, super easy. easy yes. Uh, everything I sent in. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Can you talk to a little bit about what your experience was and what it's like working with 2D barcodes for somebody that's never done it? Um. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'm the right person, but it's super easy. As I was saying, I, I didn't know exactly why everything is going through so quickly. And afterwards, I realized, hey, there's this thing, the two, two the barcodes that we are actually using. So um, I cannot really uh, give an answer there because I've been using only these. So I cannot really say how it was beforehand. Sure. We, we, we use 2D barcodes. We noticed that it definitely sped up the check-in times for products. Uh, it sped up the check-in times of products until a bunch of blogs started getting posted on how 2D barcodes would speed up the check-in of your shipments. And now, now it seems to be about the same as small parcel um, for us. So I don't know if we're going to continue with it, but 2D barcodes is definitely an issue. What I'll do is I'll link to, because we could just talk in circles and it'll sound more complicated than what it is on using 2D barcodes. So I'll link to a really good video that breaks down how to use 2D barcodes in your business in the show notes um, of this episode. So, so that would be number four. Let, let's throw one question in as we start bringing this, this episode to a close, because this is a lot on shipping to Amazon and I don't want anybody to like have their eyes glaze over, but what, what, this is a question for both of you. Like what concerns you more? The throttled back restricted inventory limits or the extended check-in or like the extended check-in times and shipping speeds from everything from factory to you to from you your warehouse to amazon all that like what concerns you more which half of that i would say the half that you have no control over right um so i would say the the limited um inventory um and, and again we're all in this we're all in the same boat, right? So my competitors are dealing with the same thing that I'm dealing with. Um, so, the, you know, um, I always say, bring me a problem, I'll bring you a solution. 
Um, and so I actually get excited with these kinds of problems, but, um, but yeah, you know, right now, the one that we're currently going with from what I've understood, um, it's mainly for prime day, prime week. Um, from what I've gathered July, August, it should go back at least a little bit. It should increase a little bit more. Um, so we'll just continue dealing with those. Um, the other, again, if you stick to the three W's, if you focus on how to get your inventory in quickly, how to make the whole process a lot smoother. Once your inventory is landing, get it out the same day. Um, you know, a lot of times when we're getting inventory in, we already have our pallets that are going to Amazon and they're scheduled for the following day. We already have it pre-programmed. That way we barely miss a beat. Um, so yeah, so I would say I, I'm more, I, I'm more stressed or worried about the things that aren't in our control that Amazon just kind of throws out and, and makes adjustments and changes for it. But it, you know, you gotta, you gotta trust that it's always for a good reason. Well, Amy, how about you? Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with what Mark was saying. And I, I also believe that everything what you cannot control at the end, it's going to make you better still because you are thinking of things that you haven't needed to think beforehand. So definitely also in our case, it was like, okay, it's limited. How do you solve the problem? So yeah, I would agree with Mark. Well, it's unanimous. Then. I, I, that's the part that concerns me definitely more as well. What are, are you guys doing anything about it, Mark? And I, I know you and I have warehouses. Noemi, I'm assuming you don't have a warehouse currently, like your own personal no, warehouse. Not personal, yeah. Something that I'm doing, and I never thought I would do it, is that I'm using, even though I have my warehouses, I'm also building out like Shipmunk, Network Prep Centers, uh, Deliver is a new one that I'm, I'm really going all in on. Really, really just thinking, you might be 100% right that, we'll be able to ship in a little more after prime day mark. I just think, uh, I think we're going to get things thrall again as we get into like October for, for Q4, like Amazon's going to want to just make the stuff in there, be the stuff that sells the most. So I don't want to be figuring out deliver or prep center relationships and stuff in the fourth quarter. Are, are, are either one of you using any like, you know, three PL networks to prepare for Q4? Yeah, we, we currently are. Um, bo both companies you mentioned, Deliver, Shipmunk, both great companies, highly recommended. Um, if anybody out there has the volume and it makes sense for their business model, definitely check them out, get a quote, see and understand what's going on there. Um, we, we, uh, we happen to actually take over. We, we acquired a shipping store um, March 1st, 2020, uh, start of the pandemic. Uh, it was a deal that we had locked in prior to that. And uh, our whole focus really towards the end of 2020 and started 2021 was fulfillment. Um, so it's kind of worked perfectly for us. Um, it's, it's a shipping store, always open, um, always able to get product out, even on those days where, you know, some of the delivers or the ship months or the, some of the other uh, third party logistics are closed. So even Saturdays, we got pickups, Saturday's products moving out. Um, but it's a very important um, piece to have. Um, if you have a shipping store near you, maybe you go up to them and present them with the idea, uh, or an opportunity, uh, for anybody listening, but, um, uh, but yeah, definitely get involved with, uh, some third party. I agree a thousand percent, even if it gets a little bit, um, it, even if it frees up a little July, August, it's definitely going to cramp down again, um, come, you know, September, October. And also it makes sense to get in touch right now or beforehand, because most of the time what's happening, you don't want to be part of the people who just like leave it for the next or the last minute, you know, and afterwards you, you just have no space there anymore. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Let, let, let me recap this real quick, just for uh, make sure I'm not missing anything. And that is, so some of our solutions so this episode doesn't turn so it doesn't sound like a doom and gloom type of thing, but some of our solutions with dealing with uh, longer than normal check-in times that we're using and we have you know amongst the three of us, yeah, thirty plus years of experience, have a three PL plan before Q four um, from the relationship side and just making sure it works with your system. Um, small parcel delivery over pallet going to Amazon. Um, Get the Mark hookup, the Fermansky hookup after the show. Reach out to him for that same day delivery. Get into that same day delivery mafia. 
Um, he just walks around buying shipping stores, but I'll let that go. The, we have uh, merchant fulfilled side by side with your FBA offering. Um, th- does that cover that, that? That's, that's what we're doing. That's a lot. That's a lot of options. Like, and it's not, I don't think you should just choose one. Like you could explore them all. Some of them stack. Um, some of them may work good for some shipping plans and not for others, but that's a ton of awesome solutions. Is there anything else that either one of you want to add that maybe you think we missed when it comes to sort of solving this uh, shipment to Amazon FBA issue? No, I think you're pretty spot on. And again, the only thing I would highlight is that those are all solutions for a problem. I would put a lot of the focus on preventing the problem from being a problem or from becoming a problem. So I know that's the easy part. And a lot of people might be listening to this. Yeah, but I'm already in, in the issue. I need a solution. So at, at that point, you know, everything you've discovered uh, or everything you've mentioned uh, and everything we've talked about is, is spot on. But make sure that it doesn't happen again. Right. To anybody listening who's currently going with it and going to use one of these solutions or start looking to these solutions, make sure that you're working on having this be the last time you're dealing with 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 such a with such an issue. Anything you'll add, Noemi, to that? No, I definitely, as I was saying, Mark, you're right on spot. Like, if you're there already, it's my, it might be too late, but how, how do you solve or what, what's, how does the situation help you actually become better in the next round? Because that's the idea, to be better next time. So, definitely. Yeah, definitely. What, um, Mark, to be totally respectful of your time, what um, you, you dangled some bait out there. I'm going to, we're all, everyone listening to this is going to bite on it. Like, I hope, you know, you just got the hug of death, like contact me and I'll hook you up. So for same day delivery possibly. So how does somebody get a hold of you so that you can, you know, share this thing that probably could just solve like the biggest thing they're stressing about in their business right now? Yeah. So, um, so again, the business is based out of the tri-state. So it's, it's uh, New York, New Jersey area. Um, so if you're doing everything out of Miami, unfortunately, the solution doesn't work there. And, and like I mentioned, I, I do some in Dallas. I even do some in California. I don't have a solution there yet. Um, as I work on them, obviously, I'd love to give um, all listeners um, and anybody involved with Wizards of Amazon um, that knowledge. Um, but as far as reaching out to me, I'm, I'm on the Telegram. I'm in the Telegram chats. Um, I'll have Carlos. I'm, I'm guessing Carlos might at me. Um, in this presentation, you guys have my information there. Um, you guys can find me on Facebook, uh, Mark Fermansky. It's Mark with a C. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, any social media you find me on, um, or you can, um, you know, the, the hug of death. I, I think you called it Carlos. You can always reach out to Carlos if you can't find me through a social media and have him make a, make a, make a little connection, but I'm always, you know, uh, I'm not always active in the chat. When I'm active in the chat, I like to be very active in the chat. So um, I'm always available for questions, answers, um, and, re- and really just to pay forward and continue working with you guys and, and help Wizards of Amazon continue to grow. Really well played, Mark. I'm going to make sure I don't <laughs> accidentally put your phone number in the show notes. So the, I it. yeah, I love it too. Uh, Mark, favorite book and why? Harry Potter doesn't count. What, what is your favorite book and why? Three favorite books because this time I'm also on. What are your top three favorite favorites? books? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, wow. Um, I can I can really only name one. Uh, I'm a I'm a small book reader. My mind does weird things when I read. Um, but uh, who moved my cheese? Who moved my cheese? Something along those lines. Um, good. That's a good one. That's probably my uh, my go to and the art of war. I'll, I'll throw two out there. You get two, yes. but Noemi wants three, so you get, get pushed hard. Come on, come on, one more. I'm horrible with titles. Um, uh, and I met the the, the author, uh, Rich Dad. Um, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Porter. Yep. Oh, nice. Favorite one. Yeah, for me. He's the first person I've met that couldn't remember the name or the author. Like, was unclear about it. Yeah, that's a classic. Th- those are. Those are three amazing books. Very high on my list. Who moved my cheese is, I don't know why more people don't talk about that actually. It's phenomenal. And it's a, and it's a short read. It's nice, simple to the point, which is the kind of reading I like. I've never been a big, big avid reader. Um, I definitely wanted to hear like follow up. We're not going to, but it was like, you know, reading short books because reading does something to your brain. Like that's, that's definitely, I think an episode <laughs> in and of itself. Um, I know, Amy, do you have any other questions? 
Nothing. Thank you so, so much for your time, Mark. It's amazing. Actually, it's nice to have you on the show and know, like, to know you better on the show than, you know, when it's real life, it's like you expect that yeah, he knows those stuff. He knows, but now he shared also all the goodies. So, so, so super. Thank you. So basically what you were saying, like Mark from the Telegram channel and social media, you were expecting to be <laughs> underwhelmed and you weren't. So the, by the way, everybody, the channel that Mark's talking about that, you know, we're chatting in is, is our free telegram chat, Amazon group chat.com is the easiest way to find it. And you can definitely add Mark, Mark with a C um, or, or me or, or, or no Amy or anything to continue the conversation in a few episodes. We're going to start, I say like five episodes from now, it's episode 100. We're going to start having a, an email at the end to like keep the conversation going that you'll be able to email us and ask questions about the show. So that is a cool feature I'm looking forward to. Mark, we are extremely excited that you shared episode 100 with us and it was a content rich show full of solutions, which I love. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Always, uh, always great to share a uh, space with you both. It was fun sharing this episode with you. If you found value in what you've heard, please show your love with a subscribe rate and a review of the show until next time.